to start us off, like tell us what is Enneagram and how deep does it really go? The Enneagram is essentially nine distinct personality types, and it's really focusing on your worldview. It's so deep that it's everything that you've ever thought. <laughs> it's like the water you're swimming in. So so often we don't even recognize that our type is driving us until we find the Enneagram because it's everything. We've built our entire being around it and we assume everyone else is doing the same. So for example, like if you're an achiever, you think everyone else is trying to to reach their goals. Everybody's driven toward goal and, and, and fears failure. And it infiltrates everything, you know, our relationships, our work, our self-care. It's in it all. So yeah, there's nine types and they're all based off of what you think you're supposed to be in the world. Okay. Is there anything that these types are based off of? Like who discovered it and how, you know, what's the, I guess the root of it? Yeah, I think the root's a little shady, honestly. Like it's a little like esoteric. Um, there's so many different hands that have touched it. But the work that we're most familiar with really comes from a man named Claudio Naranjo, who made it more popular in the 60s. And he applied psychology to kind of some woo mystical stuff that was happening at the time with numerology. And so it came together and he created, a, here are these nine distinct types and here's how they function. Here's what they fear. Here's what motivates them. Okay. So for the listeners who are beginners at the Enneagram, how can we begin to understand it? Yeah. I think the simplest way to understand your type is it's who you think you have to be in the world. Meaning this is the role you think you have to play in order to earn love, belonging, acceptance, success. And through that, oftentimes it's it's our greatest strength, right? And then it's also our greatest weakness. So, you know, the things that make us the most amazing and the most unique and really stand out and come more naturally, when done at the wrong time to an intense degree, can sometimes cause harm or not serve us or do the opposite of our intended actions. Right. So it's that idea that sometimes our greatest strengths are also like our greatest weakness. Right. A hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, give us more detail on like, what can you tell from Enneagram and what can't you tell? So you can tell why you do what you do. Um, so what's motivating your behavior? You can't tell your Enneagram type by your behavior. So a lot of times you'll hear stereotypes, like all type ones are are clean and organized. And for some, of course they are. And then for others that they have more of a perfectionistic tendency, that's their title. For some, that's more of a moral perfection. They're focused on being a good person. They don't want to do the wrong thing. And so that moral perfection can get put onto cleanliness, but it can just as easily be put onto relationships or to workload and details. And so it's it's important to remember that it's all about why you do what you do, not what you're doing. So basically you can't like judge someone and see what their type is based on what they're doing because it's, it's about the inner layer, like the why. Yes. And honestly, I think that's what makes the Enneagram so special is that it's self-driven because you can't look at someone and know their motivation. So you get, you tell me what your type is. You discover and you tell me so that, uh, you know, you're going through the exploration journey versus here's the results of a test. This is who you are. Go on with your life. It's, it's much more introspective. I see. Okay. So can you briefly go over the nine types? <laughs> Yes. And which type um, are you? I'm curious. Oh, I'm an Enneagram 7. Okay. Yeah. Do you know your type yet? I, look, I took Enneagram like years ago and I think it was 4. But it, okay. Is is this something that can change over time or are people generally, they stay that type? Your type stays the same, but okay. we change. So oh. as we grow, we start to look less like our type because oh. the goal really in Enneagram work is just to be able to access all the numbers and show use the skills of each number at the right time and place. But most of us kind of get stuck in one for a while, if not always. Okay, so let, let's go through them. Okay, so type one is the perfectionist or the reformer. This type fears being evil or corrupt, and they focus on being a good person and doing the right thing. We have 
Type two, which is the helper, this type is focused on if they are lovable or likable and they fear not being liked or loved. We have type three, the achiever. Their focus is on not being, they fear not being worthwhile Mm -hmm. and they seek significance through achievements, what they accomplish. Then we have type four, which is the individualist. This type is focused on finding and seeking their identity and expressing it outward to others. This type fears not having an identity or not being significant. Then we have type five, which is the investigator. This type is focused on being informed and being capable and competent. They fear not being capable or incompetent. And then we have type six, which is the loyal skeptic. So they kind of hold this tension between they're very loyal to people, but they're also skeptical of new people. And this type fears being without support and they are seeking support and they seek to be supported by others. And we have type seven, which is the enthusiast. This type fears being trapped in emotional pain and they seek um, being without limitation. And we have type eight, which is the challenger. This type fears being betrayed or being physically harmed, and they prioritize being strong and powerful. And we have type nine, which is the peacemaker, and this type fears loss of connection, and they prioritize making peace, keeping the peace, and maintaining those connections with other people. 